This tutorial video demonstrates uh, how you can solve a DEP2. So in a week 4 directory, there's a DEP2 challenge. And then let's get into there and then check the source code first. And it has a main and then it will inherit the permission first then call main non main function. And then internally, it will call input function. And then input function has a buffer overflow variability here, while the buffer size is just a buff size, and then we read it twice of that, of that size. And then the, now we know that the, uh, where the uh, buffer overflow variability is, and uh, unlike a DEP1, we don't have a sum function or some other functions like this, uh, that like the sum function yeah, that we can use. So in this case, how can you exploit the variability? Uh, before that, and uh, running the shell, and before that, uh, let's check the where the buffer is from the disassembly, and then the buffer is it here, and that's on the EDP minus the zero x eighty eight. And then let's write an exploit script. We will use a GDB, so that's why I set up the, this one. Then our focus is the DEP2, and then and attach it. And then we prepare a buffer Love for overriding EBP, and then EIP here. And what we will do is we will try to directly call system something from the binary program. And to do that, we need to know address of system function. And then we also need to know address of a string. So I just have Put the xxxx XX, XX, XX for here, but uh, you can find any kind of string as in, in the program's address space and then use that, and we will call the function. And to do that, we actually need to set up our stack something like this. If we have saved the EVP here, then that's EVP plus zero, and then return address that's at the EVP plus four, and then first argument of the current function is EVP plus 8 and then second argument of the function is EVP plus 12 yeah so it is structured like this and then if you put the system function address here then the first argument of the system need to be put at here. So what we will do is so if we put the address of the system here and then address of the sum of the string here then we can call system function with the string. And uh, to do that let's first find uh, some of the useful string in the program. To do that, uh, you can use the command the strings. Uh, what it does is like it tries to print out all the printable strings from the binary program. And then it will print uh, lots of uh, string like this. And then pick any kind of string that you would like to use. So for example, because main function, so it definitely includes all the function name in the program and then the main function will always there for the program so let's use the uh, this main as a target string so what we will do is we will call system main and then uh, as we did some of the tricks that, that we can create the main file here as a shell and then link the path then we can get the shell and to do that we need to know the address of the string main uh, at least we found that in this DEP2 program. So what we can do is run GDB with the DEP2 and break and main and run it. And then 
if you uh, run a magic command search main then it will search the string main from the all the binary program that we have and uh, in the our binary program DEP2 the address 80492BB it contains main so if we read that as a string then that's string main so we can use that so now we know the address of string main at here and then we will put that as an argument of the system function so p32 address of string main and then we will put the address of the system function p32 address of system function here then how can we get the address of the system function and then we can use the gdb again for that so for example let's just put zero at here Active, and then run it oh, I cannot attach it because to do that you need to change this as a dpx and then copy the program into dpx to have a not having any kind of a privilege here then then we can run the script then it will run gdb and it here you can search for the system function from GDB because uh, right now uh, this program has been loaded and then it also loaded all the libraries then you can get the address of the libc system from here so just to use print system to get the address of the system uh, function and copy this address quit the debugger and then get back to the exploit script then we will fill the system address here then it will supply the buffer save dvp and then return address at the address of the system and then first argument as the address of the main we will supply this exploit vector to the program and then let's see what ha will happen so i will check with i will check this with the debugger first and then we will move on to the uh, actual execution so we will break at uh, so at the end of the info function which is uh, uh, break at info function plus 61 so break at return and continue and then right now we are at the return of the info function and then what it runs is like it will run system because the return address is system and then are the argument uh, no 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 this is uh, like the uh, dummy data and then our first argument will be main so what we just to do is calling this so I will just uh, kit the debugger and then it says sh main not found so we can run main but it does not found any kind of the binary name main because there's no uh, main command in your system and we can do the same thing uh, as we do in the DEP1 so we can copy bnsh as a main so we have a main binary here so if we run main then it will run the shell and we can set the path to run DEP2 get the shell so for example, uh, we will change this as a DEP2. We will not attach GDB. And then before that, we can set the path environmental variable to include our path first, slash bin, and slash bin, user bin. Like this. And then supply that as an environment variable argument. And then run the program now the shell has been executed then you inherit the privilege then you can read the flag 